everyone's favorite cat food spam all right the stoker is stoking and you can just load little tiny like literally you just put twigs in it and it uh and it burns pretty pretty cool it's a lot of work to basically make cook with because you have to get a little fire started and maintain it you just take said twig shove in hole schwala This is <laughs> eaten dirtier things before. So this is your uh, your spam sandwich, huh? Yeah. Actually, not as bad as I thought. Right? They just have like this nice salty taste to them. I've actually never had spam before. Yeah, I don't eat much of it because like it's looks like cat food. But, it does. Yeah, but it's, it do doesn't taste bad. Mm -mm. Yeah. Actually, pretty good. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So we're in the Cibola National Forest, and we are about to go hit some trails. We're all packed up. We had breakfast. We kind of sat around for the morning. We have a little bit of a slow start today, but it's okay, because I think we all kind of needed just a break to kind of just hang out. Let's get right into it. Let's go hit some trails. <laughs> This trail's been pretty easy. It's just kind of like a road with some rocks on it. A couple little things to crawl over, nothing too bad. We're hoping it gets a little bit more gnarlier at the end. Uh, we didn't come all this way just to drive on a dirt road. But the view's pretty awesome. You see that out there? All right, we weren't gonna air down, but there's a lot of rocks and it's kind of kind of uncomfortable. So I aired down the 22 in the back, 20 up front. Henry went down to 5 PSI all the way around because he wants to blow a bead. He's like, it's so squishy. And I think Keith is down to somewhere around 2025 also. The quality of life is so much better. It's insane. Like, I don't even feel the road. The tire is just sucking up the rocks. Now I gotta watch my rim. Oh yeah, that was a good one, mate. Look at the rut on her. This would have been a good gooey trail, but... It's a pretty big looking mud pit, you think we're gonna make it? Like Jesse said, it's a pretty big mud pit um, with no mud. It's all dust now because of how dry it is out here. It looks like it rained a couple years ago, but uh, <laughs> rocks are incredibly drought resistant. It's so funny because I'm like, oh, I'm just driving in dry ruts. I mean, there's obviously no challenge, but I kind of forgot I only have 28 inch tires and my transfer case is low, which I'm showing was what I'm hung up on. So I got 32 inch tires. I think I might have a better chance to getting through this. So I'm going to try it for, why not? So I made it through there, drug my belly right across that thing, but she pulled right through it. I'm pretty proud of her. So I feel like Maggie has stayed way too clean on this trip. And it's, it's actually really dry, so it's not much mud, but I found some goo hole. No idea how deep that is, but everyone's bottomed out and there's rubber marks. I did drag the bottom a little bit, but I found mud in New Mexico in a drought. That's... I'm gonna go through it now too. So 
that really wasn't that bad. That was the first time we hit mud in literally weeks, it seems like. So we had a good time. Love the mud. So I didn't come this far to not get stuck. Like, I, I just want to get stuck. I think this is going to be the hole that's going to get me stuck. I got recovery ropes on the front already. We all have winches. As long as this isn't a bottomless pit and I go completely under, and I think I'll be all right. Yeah, or you'll be I'm fine. Or I'm just going to be totally screwed and be pulling me out. No, you'll be fine. What do you guys think? Should I go through it? Hit like now to go through it. Yeah, let's go through it, Jesse. It's old. God, those four liters sound so good. Now he's gonna say my turn, watch. I would count that as a victory. Uh, I never had a doubt in my mind that I wouldn't make it through there, to be quite honest with you. Um, because that Jeep's just unstoppable. So I think Henry and Keith should go through this. I don't think Henry is. Uh, he thinks he's gonna bottom out. And I think Keith just has a Land Cruiser, so he has nothing to prove, because he can obviously get through it. So let's see if we can try to talk Henry into it. Oh yeah. I don't know, something just got wet. Fortunately, the start is stronger than the engine, and a little more reliable. Oh, now I'm stuck. <laughs> well, at least the body's out of it. Yeah. It's a good thing you got your uh, swimming trunks on. <laughs> what do you need? Do you need me to grab you anything? Do you need no, me to pull you out? Oh, no, I, I want to see kind of what got wet. It'd be nice to know what it is and fix it. I don't know, it might be the distributor, but I sealed it up really good for snorkel stuff. Um, but something got wet that did not want wet. I can see nothing's even that wet. Oh, that's a confusing one. Relays are dry. It's not wet. There's nothing under here. This is one of those like stupid problems where there's nothing broken. Obviously, it's it's all Toyota, so it can't break. But why did it shut off? It's got fuel. Nothing's wet in the engine bay whatsoever. That's interesting. We might have to maybe yank him out of here so we can get a better look at this. I'm not really sure what's going to happen yet. The picky little bastard. I checked everything, checked the connections. Nothing's wet. Hit the key, starts right up. So there is something very particular happening at the exact same spot at the exact same time. I obviously ran the starter pretty hard backwards. You can do that, but do be careful. Don't get it too hot. I've had a lot of experience with building stuff, so I kind of know the cheat. I fixed the Jeep. It's up and running. It, um, I took off the distributor cap thinking it was the seal, and it was not the, the seal. It was actually a crack in the distributor which obviously formed somewhere between Kentucky's river crossings and here because we had a lot more water in Kentucky than we do here. So at this point, I'm obviously not going to dip it in again because it just keeps getting wet and shutting off. And I don't know how much my starter can take. So I'm going to keep it dry until I get a new uh, cap and rotor. Apparently my Jeep is like the shoemaker's daughter um, going without obvious maintenance. I basically use the old distributor cap that came with my engine because they never break and I put way too much faith in a 35 year old part and, and it, it did fail so but it's up and running now it just can't get wet but I'm just sitting here thinking like oh yeah of course it's the mechanics car it would be mine that broke 
So we've been out here for quite some time actually, and we still haven't really found anything too, too complicated. Uh, Keith said that he might have found something on the map that looks like it's a little bit more challenging. So we're gonna head to there and uh, try to do something a little bit more challenging than just driving down dirt road. Here's a trail that's a little more difficult, uh, a little bit more to our liking. It's actually pretty steep and the stuff's actually pretty big. Some pretty big drops right in that area right there. Well, let's try to get up it before this rain hits. Henry, you're first. Awesome. Well, it looks kind of technical. It's like a rock shelf, like keep stepping. So wheelbase will play a lot of uh, kind of where you put your tires in this one. So it looks like a lot of fun. We're gonna give it a wing and see what happens. Really with that little Jeep makes everything so god dang easy looking. Let's send this Land Cruiser up next. such a brute. All right, I'm next. All right, so I struggled a little bit coming up there. I kept getting my, my diff hung up on that rock, which is weird because Henry was able to slide it over top of that. My Jeep went up it pretty effortlessly, but I did actually drag the leaf springs up um, the rock, which would have got me quite stuck, but I have these funny little U-bolt um, mounts, but they're upside down and they're flat. They're made by uh, 
uh, rough country specialties. So anyway, I'll show you what it looks like. So here's the dirty leaf spring, and you can see it's flat. There's nothing hanging down here. The U-bolts are actually up in this little box, and it slid clean across the bottom of the leaf spring front and rear. But you can see how smooth the leaf springs are because of these specialty uh, flipped U-bolt perches. So if you have a two and a half inch spring, I really recommend them. Them things have saved the day multiple times. So here's our next little obstacle. That really doesn't look too, too bad, to be honest with you. So I think we'll be all right. Um, Keith, I, I don't know how much uh, you like gas, but... Uh, stop it, stop. <laughs> hey, you're, you're leaking some of that gold. I know, right? that bad are we gonna find something hard on this trail the obstacles so far are really fun they're not super dangerous the jeeps are going up on good you know good tire placement good driving and uh we're having a blast so this entire day i've been joking around saying how cool it would be if we could drive up to that cell phone tower which is way up on top of that mountain i think we actually found the trail that actually might lead us up to that cell phone tower i am super excited let's find out if we could do it Uh, hey, Jesse, I found out where some of the, that high center ground went. Where'd it go, Mike? It's on me, Axel. I pushed through a lot of mud. And... Yeah, you did. I should have let you go first to carve it out for me. <laughs> Another muddy. You'd, you'd think by now I've had enough of getting high centered, but I just I can't avoid these mud holes. It's just too much fun. I got my pristine interior of my house uh, covered in mud, and this mud really stinks. Mm. Let's just call this the mud room part of this, your house. Yeah, yeah, this is the mud room. Take this your is boots the off here, please. Yes. Uh, before you get into the actual bedroom. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, yeah, I got it. <laughs> that was like way more than I thought it was. What you just witnessed right there was Henry making an MRE while we're on this trail. Uh, that's pretty awesome. I'm kind of hungry too. God dang it. My MREs are in the, the way back though. Should probably pay attention to where I'm driving to. Every once in a while, 
you have to eat on the road, you know, or off road. So today what we're having uh, under the floor is uh, raisin style beef strips. I got that cooking on the old floorboard because it's 130 degrees. And uh, we came with some, some crunchy peanut butter. We got that. I have some uh, cocoa powder drink. I'm sorry, cocoa beverage powder. Just kind of hang out on the uh, door card, just shaking, shaking it up for me. And then last but not least, this bad boy came with some Skittles. Unfortunately, the Skittles say Guardians of the Galaxy, volume two. So, yeah, that memory's probably been sitting around for a while, but you know, they, they taste the same. And besides, when I die, I won't need any embalming fluid because I'll be full of preservatives. Well, let me catch up to the boys and keep eating my dinner, lunch, brunch. Well, we climbed and climbed and climbed and we got as far as we could up to our cell tower and it looks like this is the end of the road now we're to keith we're gonna go down into toward this town of uh cedro i think that's how you say it and uh from there we can catch the highway and get on to our next location all right let's do it so now we gotta air up in the rain huh yeah it's a nice rain though well, we just finished up all the trails we've been trailing all day we're all extremely exhausted yeah tired we still got to go try to find somewhere to camp tonight we want to try to get a little bit more closer to arizona if not into arizona tonight we still got to air up eat dinner we have a lot to do mm. uh, we had a lot of fun today and hopefully we can find some place fun uh, tomorrow so we'll see you guys later thanks for watching guys we're gonna end this video here i'm sure you can't hear me but we're gonna be driving to a it is lightning and thunder and it's nuts. Here it comes. All right, little Toyota Jeep. Let's see what you got. Everyone wants to be a YouTuber until you realize every five feet you have to jump out and get cameras, set up cameras, check oh, shots. The air is off. Woo. It's a lot of stopping and starting and collecting cameras. There's a lot of that. Look what we found here, mate. 
in a natural environment is an iPhone 10X S Plus 12 big thing with a lot of cameras. So it's really expensive. They don't like to be disturbed. They usually belong to some sort of clan. They're not gonna miss it. I'm gonna go through it now too. Well, when you wait till it rains and then you can use your snorkel. It's funny, this mud like, and, and the dirt made this tire look like it was like some sort of uh, ice cream treat. Does it almost look like chocolate cake with like chocolate chunks? This is, everything that's wet now is super slippery to walk on. I'm sorry. I found a thing. <laughs> okay. Um. So our trail. So from what we found, this is a trail that's a more. T uh, so from what we found. Damn it now. So we found a. Yeah. So. So let's do that. We had, uh, can I say something? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You gotta get a little bit closer. No, you're not, you're not allowed. 